Welcome back. You're listening to the Voice of Russia in London. I'm Brendan Cole. The sexual grooming of children in the UK is a much bigger problem than has previously been recognised. The government has just said. The Children's Minister, Tim Loughton, has just announced that an action plan will be launched to tackle child sexual exploitation. It comes just days after a group of men were arrested in a second sex grooming case uncovered by the police who smashed the notorious Rochdale child sex ring. That particular case, nine Asian men from Rochdale and Oldham were jailed over the sexual exploitation of girls. The fact that they were a network of Asian origin exploiting non-Asian girls has sparked much controversy. The judge presiding over the case, Gerald Clifton, suggested that they had targeted their victims because they were not of their own community or religion. But police and political leaders have denied that the crimes were about race, saying that the men had simply targeted victims because they were vulnerable. Well, to discuss this issue, I'm joined by Fiaz Mughal. He's the founder and director of the Faith Matters Group. Um, it's also set up a new helpline to monitor anti-Muslim attacks. On the phone, we have Wendy Shepherd. She's the Children's Services Manager for Child Sexual Exploitation uh, for the country's biggest charity for children, Bernardo's. And we have Tommy Robinson. He's the leader of the English Defence League, which is a group which is campaigning against what they see, the rise of Islamification. And on Skype, we have Professor Roger Griffin. He's a professor in modern history at Oxford Brookes University and is in particular following the rise of Islamophobia. Fiaz Mughal, I'm going to start with you. The case in Rochdale last week, how shocking was it for the Muslim community? I mean, it is, it's shocking for any community. And I think uh, in this instance, it's, uh, it is shocking because these individuals were, were, were in the community and, uh, you know, seem to be part and parcel of the community doing everyday jobs. And so clearly for some it's come as a shock and it should be because these things should not happen at all. It doesn't matter which community you are. But uh, I think there's some introspection, introspection in the sense that when this happens in any community, people need to look into how they can try to uh, pick uh, some of the issues and behaviours that are taking place with individuals they know. I think we're not talking about snooping here. We're talking about realising that the most vulnerable in our society need to be protected. And actually, Mohammed Shafiq from the Ramadan Foundation said last week that the sexual abuse that came out of this case, how it came out of this trial, does go on in the Pakistani community, for instance. But some in those communities bury their heads in the sand over the issue. Would you agree with that? I think that I, mean, we, I think to label this and say, well, it's an issue of the Pakistani community is, is really problematic. We have, we have these issues around uh, uh, burying information in a whole range of different communities in this country, particularly new migrant communities who are bringing over sometimes cultures which are, which are different to, to the UK culture. Now, saying that, um, we, you know, we shouldn't make this uh, on the basis of racial uh, communities. But, and, and the but is, when there are vulnerable individuals affected, particularly young uh, females and males, uh, the community, any community which finds itself in that position, needs to start to, to ask, how do we put into effect measures where this does not happen, and particularly from that specific community? Wendy Shepherd from Bernardo, as you're at the front line uh, in dealing with um, sexually abused children, do you think, uh, in, the, in the wake of this Rochdale case, that there is an ethnic dimension to abuse cases in your own experience? I think until we take a real proper look across the country, uh, we've, we cannot assume that this is just happening with uh, British Asian communities. We have an ad we've had two examples where that has happened, and we, of course, have got to take a look and deal with what those issues are. However, to put this on particularly the Asian Pakistanis is wrong. Uh, I've been in this uh, work for the last 12 years, and I've seen every type of ethnic uh, uh, abuser uh, that's been involved in the exploitation of children. And I think it's right society actually buries its head about sexual ex abuse and sexual exploitation, and that's what we need to be addressing. We have attitudes that young men and uh, boys have, and adult males, about women and children that still need to be uh, really uh, raised, uh, awareness being raised about. Uh, and until we do that uh, succinctly and efficiently, we will continue to have young people exploited and abused in this way. Tommy Robinson from the English Defence League. The case last week was abhorrent for everybody, but there's no racial element to this, is there? Of course there is. There's not racial, there's a religious one. Um, but this case in Rochdale, there's another case coming up at the end of this month or the start of June with another seven Muslim men and another 50 young girls aged 11 to 14 identified in Oxford. We've had 60 girls in Telford. We've had 100 girls identified by the police in Blackpool. These are all Pakistani Muslim men. Um, when we, if you ask a Muslim in Britain what is their, what is their objective in, in modern Britain is to emulate their prophet Muhammad. Now, 1,400 years ago, it was a long time ago, but Muhammad married a six-year-old child called Aisha 
and he consummated that marriage when she was nine. Okay, now that's, that was 1400 years ago. I don't blame Mohammed. 1400 years ago, up until 1875, you could have sex with 11 year old kids in Britain. Yeah, we've evolved, we've moved on. When imams start accepting and teaching that Mohammed was completely and categorically wrong for doing that, we might be getting somewhere. When you draw a link and a parallel, I think it's um. It's Surah, Surah, Surah 23, verse 1 to 6. It says quite clearly in the Quran that you can take non-Muslim women as sexual slaves. You can. So what we see is people, and, and one of the Pakistani men in court said, it was it come up that he said, it's okay. It's okay in my, in my country. Okay, back to, back to Fiaz Magal. This, yeah. is, this is obviously um, an issue that is uh, being used by some extremist groups to foster resentment against uh, Muslims. I mean, what can, you, what can your group do and what, what, what's your reaction to that? I mean, the reaction's pretty simple. I mean, Tommy seems to forget the fact that in 2009 there was a paedophile ring in Scotland, eight white individuals. Does he say they're Christian individuals? The answer is no. Tommy's been on record a number of occasions attacking specifically Islam and Muslims. When he talks about paedophilia in Pakistan, he's just mentioned that. There's no such thing. Let me tell you, Tommy, we work in Pakistan. There are many, many imams in this country who actually stand up against injustice. You simply are trying to promote an anti-Muslim rhetoric because your group has distinctly come out as an anti-Muslim group. You also go on to mention the fact of the Prophet Muhammad. I mean, I, to be lectured by somebody on Islam who actually has a deep hatred of Islam is quite pathetic, actually. The reality is... Muslims in this country live very simple, decent lives, want to get on in this country. We have no desire, and I'm speaking as a Muslim myself, we have no desire to cause any damage to this country because it's our country, Tommy, and I think you seem to forget that. The reality is where we find any incidents of child grooming, that needs to be busted up, whether they are white individuals in Scotland, whether they are Asians, whether they are blacks, Chinese, where we find that, we need to bust it. Where, where I have a personal issue with what Tommy goes on about, he's trying to create effectively a religious and race war in this country. We don't need it. We don't want it. Tommy, frankly, I think you need to belt up. Professor, Ro Professor Roger Griffin, we'll go to you from Oxford Brooks University. Um, you're an expert in, uh, in extremism across Europe, but also the rise of, of Islamophobia across Europe. Do some groups that have been described as extremist use cases like this to increase recruitment? Uh, we've had a wonderful example just now. Uh, the... Well, obviously, any group that victimizes any other ethnic or religious group will pick on any headline-grabbing event which seems to confirm the stereotype. And, and if you look at, for example, Hitler's Germany and stereotyping of Jews, or there are thousands of different examples, um, it, it is quite natural that if you have a narrative which says that there is a community in your midst which is not able to be integrated because they are different, then any such piece of news will be exploited. And incidentally, there is not just in, in Britain that groups are trying to find any examples of intolerance or, of, or crime or abuse of minors or practices within faith communities to vilify the group. It is obviously totally abhorrent to the, the vast majority of Muslims what has happened. And the idea that somehow this group was using the Quran as justification for what it was doing, I'm afraid, is, 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 a, is a very skewed argument. Um, can I just point out also within this context that every single institution has weaknesses and fallibilities. And if you look at the recent events unfolding in Ireland about the Catholic Church, uh, you, you have yet another example of child abuse, which as it is not an indictment of Christianity, it's an indictment of the an institution which has fostered certain practices and not dealt with them properly. And, and if I can infer from that something which I suppose we, we should be debating in this program, uh, it is both for civil society as a whole and for the, 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 the group in particular, uh, the Muslim society and Pakistani communities, to, to tread on this viper as, as quickly as it can, um, but but to to use it as an example of uh, of of Islam uh, being somehow pedophilic in its nature, I'm, I'm afraid is is the, is typical of the way extremist groups will exploit this sort of incident. Uh, Wendy Shepherd from Bernardo's, do you think the argument about race and religion somehow detracts from? Uh, the wider fight against child abuse. I certainly do. I think whilst uh, we continue to focus on who the perpetrators are and their ethnicity, we fail consistently about those children that are being sexually exploited. And the minute we start blaming one group, we'll stop looking at all groups. The fact is, 
every every race is has a potential to abuse children and it's been borne out with court cases with imprisonments uh, over centuries and the, uh, the the point is here we have vulnerable children that get preyed upon upon by predatory adults who really don't give a care about what they're doing to those children and it's nothing about race and all about sexual abuse. Uh, Tommy Robinson uh, from the EDL, uh, you're clearly exploiting this issue, aren't you, for your own in, for your own ends and for your own gains? It's ridiculous to say that. Who, excuse me, in working class communities, whose daughters, whose sisters, I meet the families of some of these children. I meet the families of these children because that's who's being affected, not the people, the politicians living in the suburbs, our kids. 80% of grooming cases are Pakistani Muslim men. 3% of this country is Pakistani Muslim men. That is massively and ridiculously over, overpopulated in, in, in the case. And, and, and there has to be a reason why. What is the reason why? Anyway, can, I just draw, can I just draw your attention? Can I just draw your attention to a, a renowned, renowned case that, um, that I guess in the studio referred to the case in 2009, a group of men in Scotland who, who were convicted of uh, child sexual uh, offences, they were all white and the whole community wasn't stigmatised because of that. Grooming in gangs, yeah, passing them round in gangs, specifically targeting a different culture and religion. What would happen, tell us the truth, what would happen if nine Christian men, right, in, in all these towns and cities were, were passing around Muslim girls and raping them? Everyone would be going absolutely living absolutely wild. There's been a conspiracy of silence, a complete letdown of these girls, a complete letdown by the system and a failure due to political correctness by our police forces, by our politicians. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I guess the wider issue here is that um, there's, there are sections of the British community that feel that these girls were let down by social services, by the police. Um, there was uh, the police had evidence that um, they should have investigated these cases. They chose not to for what some say is a fear of uh, of being accused of racism. This is a big problem, isn't it? I mean, I think this is the first. There is a problem here in, the, in that this case. You're right. You're right to say wasn't picked up, and actually the CPS was not going to prosecute until. And let me just state this for Tommy: until a, a, a prosecutor of Pakistani Muslim origin. Uh, Nazir Afsal, the prosecutor in the West Midlands, picked up the case and prosecuted the case. So, you know, Tommy's here sitting talking about Muslim individuals. The very prosecutor who took up the case was a Pakistani British male. Now, saying that, yes, we have in our society the fact that on Saturday night, if you walk out on Saturday night, you will see many young girls who will drink a lot and unfortunately be in a vulnerable position. I think in our society, we need to reflect on the fact that there are vulnerabilities, particularly for the young females, and that all of us as within communities need to be able to uh, reach out and provide some kind of assistance and guidance to these individuals. Um, what I have a real problem with, and I think many of the speakers have a problem with, is when, when Tommy Robinson comes on here and, and thinks, first of all, he's a theologian on Islam, which is distinctly uh, poisonous, and then says that actually as Muslims we wake up and uh, you know we want to con conduct paedophilia. Well, let me tell you, Tommy, the fact of the matter is that you know for many of us working in social services who want to reach out and help the vulnerable in society, you are not just offensive, you are grossly uh, wrong. So you are misquoting facts, taking facts out of context, but all of us should reach out to those people, particularly young females in our society, and give them the opportunity to be protected. Wendy Shepherd from Bernardo's, do you make demands on what local councils should do and what the police should do? Uh, absolutely. Where we run our services, we are uh, in influencing the police and social care every day about what needs to happen to those children that are sexually exploited. And first and foremost, you need to identify what the problem is, who those vulnerable young people are, and who those potential perpetratory men are, and then put the protection around those young people. Uh, not every young person that's been sexually exploited is somebody that goes out and drinks on a Saturday night either. These can be simply young people who are around a park, sat doing childhood uh, young people things that do get approached by males, again, of def diff every different ethnicity. Uh, so it's important that we recognise what can happen and that every local authority, every police force, every social care, every community member takes their responsibility about protecting children. You're listening to The Voice of Russia. I'm Brendan Cole. Today we're talking about the sexual exploitation of children in the UK. Joining me in The Voice of Russia's London studio to discuss this is Fiaz Mogal. He's the founder and director of the group Faith Matters. Wendy Shepherd from Bernardo's. Tommy Robinson from the English Defence League. And Roger Griffin from Oxford Brooks University. Roger Griffin, I'm just going to turn to you. Give me a, a, a flavour of what similar sort of cases have, taken, have, have happened like this uh, across Europe. And what kind of impact have they had on their societies? Obviously, what, what 
alarms me is the fact that though uh, historically lots of people are worried about the rise of fascism, the rise of uh, Islamophobia and uh, and the obsession with national identity as if there's a single pure national identity is a phenomenon which is now the most powerful enemy of, of liberal values and, and we, these people are not fascists and they're not Nazis but they do have a very deep concern about national identity and can I just say as a liberal there are three issues where I think uh, Tommy Robinson is onto something but it's the way he goes about addressing them that I have big problems with and the three, three issues I like to stress is A, there are huge issues about identity in Europe um, obviously, what Breivik did about it by, by trying to start a, an anti-Muslim crusade was absolutely abhorrent. But he, there are issues about identity and the type of Europe that is developing from uh, due to mass immigration and uh, the rise of multi-faith communities in Europe. And in the case in Rochdale, can I point out that The Guardian itself published an article in which it quoted statistics from the child exploit, the CEOP, the Child Exploitation Online Protection Center, which said that of the 2,000 cases of uh, grooming that they, they, uh, they are investigating, 46% of those did involve Pakistani Asians or Muslims. I think Asian is a very strange term, uh, but only 7% Pakistani Asians are in, in the country. So there is a massive over-representation of Pakistani males involved in gang grooming. Now, the inference for, of that for, for, from that for me is not that there's a massive problem in Islam or in being a Muslim, but there is something about Pakistani culture and society uh, in respect of how a very small percentage of its males feel legitimate in, in, in grooming uh, sex slaves, which I think has to be addressed quite specifically. And the third point I'd like to throw in is the fact that it is absolutely true that in country after country, uh, some attempts by the police and social services to involve themselves in investigating crimes or malpractice in ethnic communities is inhibited by political correctness. Fiaz Mughal, what do you make of that? Is it's political correctness? These are these are these these are issues that are t people are handling with kid gloves, and this is to the detriment of uh, of the welfare of children. I mean, I I I, I think political correctness really is not, is not the big factor here. I mean, the big factor here specifically if we're looking at issues of grooming that have taken place, are about getting communities to understand that the responsibility for other people also rests with them. We, you know, communities need to realize it's not a them and us mentality. This is not about the Pakistani community protecting itself. It should never be. And those kind of messages also no, need to go into the Pakistani community. The person across the road who's your neighbor, who's a white neighbor, equally should have your respect and, your, and, and their dignity need to be protected. That's the kind of messaging that we need to get across in our communities. That's the kind of messaging we as an organization try to do. But I think just to kind of sum up, this is about all of us, I think in many instances, trying to take responsibility, and particularly within the Pakistani community, a red line, that actually other people do matter, and that other people and their rights also do matter. Tommy Robinson from the English Defence League. Uh, some could say that actually the more closed society, I guess religions that, are, that, that have a degree of sexual taboos may have more problems with dealing with sexual abuse. The sexual, child sexual abuse case in the Catholic Church in Ireland uh, is a clear example of that. Got nothing to do with Islam, hasn't it? What I'm hearing a lot of is from, from, from Muslims seems to be victim blaming because girls are out on the street drinking late at night. A girl should be able to walk down the street naked at 12 years old without getting raped or groomed and abused. And I think everyone agrees thing. with that, though, to be fair, oh, Tommy Robinson. In, in, Nobody in agrees that, they, that, 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 that they're fair game. So that's what I hear. But in Rochdale, a, a local Muslim counsellor went to the court trial and defended those men. Now they've been convicted of paedophilia, there's been no apology for him defending them. There's been no resignation. There's been no public outcry by the local Muslim community for him to leave his position of power. And when we talk about Islam, Islam which he needs to do, ASAP, we're demonstrating there in three, four weeks, but when you say Islamophobia, a phobia is an irrational form. Now, it is quite rational when we see these paedophilic gangs. It's quite rational when we see terrorism, extremism, Islamism, female genital mutation. When we see these fearful things, it's quite rational to condemn them and go against them. It's not irrational. It's not a phobia. 
it's quite rational to speak up against these practices. And we can't blame it on the Pakistani community, because when you go to Sweden, these same similar cases are happening within the Iraqi community. In America, you've got 29 Somalians just arrested. The link between all these groups in France, there's cases of Algerians, the link between all of them is Islam. And I'm merely pointing them out. I don't hate Muslims. I actually quite like a lot of Muslims I've grown up with in Luton. But there is a problem embedded in their ideology which promotes hatred against non-Muslims. It promotes sexual slavery against non-Muslims. A key, a key issue about this is, 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 I guess, the wider issue is, is this an indictment on society? And Wendy Shepherd from Bernardo's, what does this say about British society? There's a whole raft of issues here. And it's clear from that, that, that particular case that, you know, Police should have acted quicker, social services should have been in there quicker. There is, has been a general complacency about children who've been sexually exploited. I've worked in this area for 20 years, 12 years specifically on exploitation. It took the racial issue to put it on the front page of the Times. That's what I object to. I object to the fact that children who were exploited for many years were ignored until some, somebody could say, oh, it's this particular group that are doing it. It's not about that particular group. This has happened to children for centuries. And what we're seeing now is it coming to uh, the fore much more clearly. I remember and lived through the child abuse scandal in Cleveland that had nothing to do uh, with other than white British families. And that essentially, for me, quietened down society on sexual abuse. It, it, the, the fact that there was a trial about and the fact that it was called a scandal actually rendered people helpless in dealing with sexual, uh, sexual abuse and sexual exploitation and made paediatricians fearful to even uh, examine. And this, I think, is another way that we silence in secret the abuse of children and we keep it there by taking it off those children and putting it on to a, a section of society to blame. The fact is children are at risk, risk of sexual abuse and sexual exploitation in this country as they are in many others and we need to deal with it and we need to take the bull by the horns and not be frightened to say this is wrong in whichever community it's happening with and to absolutely put everything possible in to prevent it and to safeguard children and that's where this lies. Every professional, every community member, every person that exists needs to be making a stand about protection. You're listening to The Voice of Russia with me, Brendan Cole. Fiaz Mughal, um, I mean, is, this, is this an issue that a group like yours has to deal with in terms of integration? Or I mean, I think there are numerous factors affecting uh, Pakistani and other migrant communities today. I mean, whether it's, whether it's lack of employment, whether it's, um, you know, uh, uh, whether it's uh, internal conservatism, there's a whole range of issues affecting them. That's no excuse for what's happened to these young girls. However, saying that, within the work we do, we also make it very clear that if, if there are underlying problems ar around child protection, that institutions need to be able to be developed, to be robust, to pick up those issues. So that's part of the work we do. Uh, and that's why I completely agree with, uh, with the, the speaker from Barnardo's. This is an issue that affects us all, but we need to strengthen and make more robust those institutions within uh, migrant and communities like the Pakistani community. So the answer is yes, we will continue to do that work and strengthen those institutions to protect the innocent and the vulnerable. Can I just come back to one or two, or two things Tommy said. I want to go back to the two things that Tommy said. Tommy's talked about FGM, terrorism. He talks about everything that's a problem with Islam, frankly. I mean, and, you know, within the Quranic text, it's very clear. Anti-terrorism statements, very clear in there. FGM, not even mentioned. Uh, these are clearly cultural things. Talks about Iraqi communities having problems and doesn't talk about issues of migration and identity, which um, the speaker from Oxford Brooks has mentioned. So, again, it's all about blaming Islam. He then says, I don't, I don't hate Islam. We run a project called the Tel Mama Project which is around measuring anti-Muslim attacks. And we can tell you we have statistics, which we are going to present to the Home Office, showing that nearly 20% of the cases that come in which are anti-Muslim attacks have some form of an EDL member or EDL link because we have them snapshotted. We have that evidence with us. So when he comes on here and says, you know, the EDL, I don't hate, you hate Islam, there is statistical evidence which shows that his members are conducting those attacks. An EDL demonstration, 3rd of September 2010. Every single Muslim watching this on YouTube, on 7-7, you got away with killing and maiming British citizens, you got away with it. You had better understand that we've built a network from one end of this country to the other and we will not tolerate it and the Islamic community will feel the full force of the EDL. So, Tommy, when you come on air and you say, I don't hate Islam, well, actually, you know, you're double standards, double speak, um, and I'm afraid all of the evidence I've got right in front of me shows that you actually do not like Muslims. This is not a case of 
the Muslims. This is a case of individuals who are grooming uh, young girls, and we all need to bust these kind of gangs. Tommy Robinson from the English Defence League, you're clearly using this uh, this sexual abuse case to strengthen your case against Islam. Is that right? Do you really think we want to be talking about this? Do you really think we're using it for anything? These cases have been getting arrests. Arrests have been made in the last three years since we formed. Because we're standing in city centres with families telling you these girls are being abused, these girls are being raped. There's been a conspiracy of silence to facilitate it by Islamic leaders, by police leaders. No one's done anything about it for 20, 30 years. Everyone's known this going on. And when your man says, well, that, 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 that comment I made when I gave that speech, I try to differentiate Muslims to Islam. I have a problem with 7th century Islam. I think Sufis are brilliant. They, they are working in Britain. They are such a great sect of Islam. We don't have a problem with it. We have a problem with these Wahhabi, Saudi-funded sects, Salafi, these ones who are trying to take it back to the Abandis, these extremist sects of Islam, which are not in integrating and, and, and they're fostering hatred within all of our communities. That, when I said you'll feel the full, full force of the English Defence League, we're trying to put a rocket, into, not a rocket, but trying to put put to, to drive, drive into the Islamic community so that they come out and reform themselves. So they realise the only time the Islamic community started dealing with the extremists in Luton was when we run through the streets. That's the only time. That's what they need. Uh, uh, so when I'm saying that, I'm trying to bring them forward to, to, to fix up and, and reform their ideology within Britain, which is clearly not working. Clearly, the rise across Europe of anti-Islamist political parties in every single country are gaining power. The reason why is because Islam's not working. Professor Roger Griffin from Oxford Brooks University, what do you make of that? Well, no, can I just say to Tommy, well, look, it seems to me that we all agree here. We all hate Islamism. We all hate Islamist extremism. We all hate the abuse of, of minors. Why don't we all work together to defend a real England, the real England that exists, from all the abuses that are committed by all communities and all types of, of, of uh, groups, wh- whatever their ethnicity or gender, so that we all work together to pull the passion you've got for England into making England a better place for everybody. The language you used on that YouTube uh, which which has just been quoted, is extremely misleading because it could very easily be heard as a general statement of hatred of, of Islam. And uh, you've just made it quite specific that it wasn't meant like that. But I think we all need to stop using street protests as a way of move, moving things forward and actually work together to make England a, a beautiful, wonderful place where citizens and children and the vulnerable can live in safety. Fiaz, uh, Fiaz Miguel, what do you think? Do you th- what, is, what is the legacy of this particular, this particular Rochdale case and how do you think it's changed the way we look at race relations and re- with regard to sexual abuse? Well, legacy is basically we need a strengthening of institutions. Uh, it doesn't matter whether they're civil society institutions or statutory institutions to protect the vulnerable in our communities, particularly in this instance vulnerable girls. We need to strengthen those institutions. We also need to say there's a clear red line in communities. It doesn't matter whether you're white, you're black, as I said, Asian, whatever. There's a red line. And that red line means if you are involved in this kind of activity, the community itself should be able to inform the police and you will get busted. It's simple as that. We need to draw those red lines. And just finally, Wendy Shepherd from Bernardo's, what do you think the legacy of this case, this Rochdale case in particular, will be uh, for what you're doing in trying to combat child sex exploitation? I think for me, it's at least raised the bar in terms of that this exists. Children are being exploited. And we need to work, as has been said, with our communities in making sure that this is combated and work together to have um, a a sexual uh, exploitation, sexual abuse free society. And the way we'll do that is by working with each other, not against each other. I'd like to end now by thanking all my guests for joining me, Brendan Cole on The Voice of Russia in London. You can stay tuned for the headlines. Racial element to this, is there? Of course there is. There's not racial, there's a religious one. Um, this case in Rochdale, there's another case coming up at the end of this month or the start of June with another seven Muslim men and another 50 young girls aged 11 to 14 identified in Oxford. We've had 60 girls in Telford. We've had 100 girls identified by the police in Blackpool. These are all Pakistani Muslim men. Um, when we, if you ask a Muslim in Britain what is their, what is their objective in, in modern Britain is to emulate their prophet Muhammad. Now, 1,400 years ago, it was a long time ago, but Muhammad married a six-year-old child called Aisha and he constituted that marriage when she was nine. Okay, now that that was 1400 years ago. I don't blame Mohammed. 1400 years ago, up until 1875, you could have sex with 11 year old kids in Britain. Yeah, we've evolved, we've moved on. When imams start accepting and teaching that Mohammed was completely and categorically wrong for doing that, we might be getting somewhere. When you draw a link and a parallel, I think it's um, it's Surah, Surah, Surah 23, verse 1 to 6. 
it says quite clearly in the Quran that you can take non-Muslim women as sexual slaves. You can. So what we see is people, and, and one of the Pakistani men in court said it was it come up that he... Uh, in, the, in the wake of this Rochdale case, that there is an ethnic dimension to abuse cases in your own experience. I think until we take a real proper look across the country, uh, we've, we cannot assume that this is just happening with uh, British Asian communities. We haven't had, we've had two examples where that has happened, and we, of course, have got to take a look and deal with what those issues are. However, to put this on particularly the Asian Pakistanis is wrong. Uh, I've been in this uh, work for the last 12 years, and I've seen every type of ethnic uh, uh, abuser uh, that's been involved in the exploitation of children. And I think it's right society actually burrits its head about sexual ex abuse and sexual exploitation and that's what we need to be addressing. We have attitudes that young men and uh, boys have and adult males about women and children that still need to be uh, really uh, raised, uh, awareness being raised about. Uh, and until we do that uh, succinctly and efficiently, we will continue to have young people exploited and abused in this way. Tommy Robinson from the English Defence League. The case last week was abhorrent for everybody, but there's no individuals they know. I think we're not talking about snooping here. We're talking about realising that the most vulnerable in our society need to be protected. And actually, Mohammed Shafiq from the Ramadan Foundation said last week that the sexual abuse that came out of this case, came out of this trial, does go on in the Pakistani community, for instance, but some in those communities bury their heads in the sand over the issue. Would you agree with that? I think that I, mean, we, I think to label this and say, well, it's an issue of the Pakistani community is, is really problematic. We have, we have these issues around uh, uh, burying information in a whole range of different communities in this country, particularly new migrant communities who are bringing over sometimes cultures which are, which are different to, to the UK culture. Now, saying that, um, we, you know, we shouldn't make this uh, on the basis of racial uh, communities, but, and, and the but is, when there are vulnerable individuals affected, particularly young uh, females and males, uh, the community, any community which finds itself in that position, needs to start to, to ask, how do we put into effect measures where this does not happen, and particularly from that specific community? Wendy Shepherd from Bernardo's, you're at the front line uh, in dealing with um, sexually abused children. Do you think... Uh Welcome back. You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London. I'm Brendan Cole. The sexual grooming of children in the UK is a much bigger problem than has previously been recognised, the government has just said. The Children's Minister, Tim Loughton, has just announced that an action plan will be launched to tackle child sexual exploitation. It comes just days after a group of men were arrested in a second sex grooming case uncovered by the police who smashed the notorious Rochdale child sex ring. That particular case, nine Asian men from Rochdale and Oldham were jailed over the sexual exploitation of girls. The fact that they were a network of Asian origin exploiting non-Asian girls has sparked much controversy. The judge presiding over the case, Gerald Clifton, suggested that they had targeted their victims because they were not of their own community or religion. But police and political leaders have denied that the crimes were about race, saying that the men had simply targeted victims because they were vulnerable. Well, to discuss this issue, I'm joined by Fiaz Mughal. He's the founder and director of the Faith Matters Group. Um, it's also set up a new helpline to monitor anti-Muslim attacks. On the phone, we have Wendy Shepherd. She's the Children's Services Manager for Child Sexual Exploitation uh, for the country's biggest charity for children, Bernardo's. And we have Tommy Robinson. He's the leader of the English Defence League which is a group which is campaigning against what they see, the rise of Islamification. And on Skype we have Professor Roger Griffin. He's a professor in modern history at Oxford Brookes University and is in particular following the rise of Islamophobia. Fiaz Mughal, I'm going to start with you. The case in Rochdale last week, how shocking was it for the Muslim community? I mean, it is, it's shocking for any community, and I think uh, in this instance it's, uh, it is shocking because these individuals were, were, were in the community and, uh, you know, seem to be part and parcel of the community doing everyday jobs. And so clearly for some it's come as a shock, and it should be because these things should not happen at all. It doesn't matter which community you are, but uh, I think there's some introspection, introspection in the sense that when this happens in any community, people need to look into how they can try to uh, pick uh, some of the issues and behaviours that are taking place with 